Hey guys, how's it going? James here. I'm actually visiting a good buddy of mine here, Justin. We're going to talk about his uh, collectible shop here. How are you doing today, bud? I'm doing fantastic. It's a nice warm morning in October. Awesome. I really appreciate your time for this. All right, uh, I guess we'll get right on into it. What was your decision to start a collectible shop? Um, it kind of it, it, it kind of came out of necessity in a sense. Um, to give me a bit, a bit of my backstory, um, I came out of film school, of all things, uh, wanting to be a filmmaker originally. I uh, realized that path was uh, a little bit, little bit more intensive than I was willing to do, and I didn't see uh, a lot of money in it, and I came out of school heavily in debt, owing a ton of student loans, which I'm sure a lot of you are in that same situation, and I kind of fell back on something I was doing on the side, actually, to make a little bit of scratch help pay the bills, get some grocery money, help support my own passion for collecting video games. So it was something that I was already doing on the side. It started little, and then it just kind of slowly moved to the forefront of my life and became a necessity, became something that I just got better and better at, and I found a passion for it. So it was kind of like a, um, a necessity, but also kind of predetermined, predestiny kind of thing, where it was, it was almost like I fell into this, but it was almost meant to be, just based on my background. I hope that answers your question well. Perfect. All right, so what variety of items do you sell here? Well, originally when I opened the shop, it was strictly going to be video games because I'm a huge video game collector. But I also am a huge movie collector, so originally when we opened, it was video games and movies. We've been open just over two years now, and after the first year, we realized there's a whole other market we were ignoring, which was toys. And I used to collect toys and action... By toys, I mean like action figures, like the horror figures, uh, alien, predator, sci-fi, all that stuff. I, uh, anime figures. I was really big into that in high school, but then I fell out of it. But I had that stuff coming into the store. People were selling it to me, and then people wanted to buy it. So I then moved into the toy market. Now the store is split three ways. It's one-third movies, one-third video games, one-third toys and collectibles. I put toys and collectibles just in one category. No, for sure. And I actually got to be honest, I'm loving getting into the toys. It has completely reignited my passion for collecting toys so now i'm i myself am a customer of my own store now and it's just been a great experience so i like i like that we've opened up into something more that way all right um do you actually offer any store promotions here in the store so i generally avoid uh store promotions and i'll explain why so i know a lot of places will do like the 20 percent off or buy one get one free and all that stuff but i feel that my prices are already some of the most fair that you're going to find in the area. So cutting it even further would get to the point where I was barely making any money. So I generally don't do store promotions just for the fact that I think I have some of the most fair prices in the area already. What was your biggest learning experience is something that you could quickly sell off? So what was what's the thing that sells the, the most? Is that what you mean? Like uh, the fastest something that like you the fastest moving thing that you never would have thought you would have been able to just flip overnight sort of thing. Well, uh, okay, I, I can tell you right now, everybody's gonna think I'm gonna say retro cartridges, retro cartridges. But the thing with collectibles is it's it's like this. It's like a wave. It's not a constant line, and what's hot becomes not, and it just constantly keeps switching back and forth. So. Originally, the thing that I was surprised I was able to quick flip was Funko Pops, but then they slowly became not as hot, and then you now you got to be careful about which pops you buy. Uh, retro cartridges. Five years ago, you could buy a Mario Kart, and you could sell that by the end of the day. That is starting to slow now. We're seeing a plateau in the in the retro cartridge market. So I think. It's always changing as to like what is going to be the quick seller, what's not. And also, you don't know who's going to walk through the door, which is part of the excitement. And often things that I think would sell quick don't. There's been some surprising things that I've sat on and I still have in the shop, like statues and that. Yeah. I would have thought like, oh, this is a hot, this is amazing. It's going to move quick. And it's just, and for whatever reason, never sold. But if I had to pick something in the store that sells the quickest, something that we specialize in, I would say a uh, horror. Horror is probably our best seller, our quickest seller. It's very hard for us to keep it in stock. I mean, horror movies, horror merchandise, horror action figures. This stuff's hard to get, and it just sells It sells very quickly. And with that, uh, obviously right now, it's basically right on uh, Halloween. So, yeah, we're, so, we're filming this in October, yeah. and we're literally, what, two weeks away from Halloween now. Yeah. So, well, the thing I always say to customers is, um, customers say to me, they're like, oh, it's 
it's Halloween time. You must be doing hot for sales. And I said, every, for us, every month's Halloween time. We're, it's hor it's always full of horror in here. So you have Halloween in December, basically. Basically, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes. If you want to buy your children uh, uh, horror-themed uh, merchandise uh, for Christmas, this is the place to come. All right. What is the most risky part of your vintage collecting uh, store operation? The riskiest part of owning like a collectible shop? Is that like, either owning it and uh, or running it? Like, running what is the riskiest thing about owning that's the a store like part, this? Yeah. Uh, what to buy? That that's that's a hundred percent. It. This is a market. Sorry, this is a business where you have to know your market. So, what to buy and what price to buy it at, and that you, you can't just know that. You can't just read online like retro cartridges are hot i'm gonna i'm only gonna buy n64 cards and super nintendo you have to know which specific games to buy and what prices to pay on them to actually make a sustainable business out of it and that has been very difficult originally when i was first opening i was buying way too many filler titles that just don't move fast enough and you end up with nine ten copies of games that you're going to sit on and with toys the biggest thing that i've learned for my market and now every store is going to be different so what sells for me might not sell for you and what sells for you might not sell in this market here i'm in downtown oshawa that's its own beast compared to other areas so what moves it like for say belleville is going to move differently for me right oh for sure yeah I, I, that's, the, that's just the nature of of market and collecting of, of your demographic so you have to find out what is going to sell in your area what do people want in this area i've learned very quickly in this area um detailed action figures sell very well so things like what's right behind us, like NECA, McFarlane, uh, Mezco, very high detailed figures sell well for me. A, a mistake I made originally was I was buying too many, uh, I'll say, kitty toys, like very simple things. Yeah. So for example, here, even right beside us, like plushy stuff doesn't seem to move for, for me very well. You'd think it would. This is awesome, right? A little plushy Green Ranger, but it doesn't sell very well. But if I put this in Hot Topic and EB Games... They'll sell it out of these like they'll sell out of these within like two weeks, you know. Not even they'll sell out of them in like two days. So it just it just the biggest thing is what to buy and what price to buy it at. That's the biggest learning curve. Since opening your store, are there any items that you've learned to specifically just stop buying and selling because you just literally cannot move it or it's just zero interest to your customer base? Uh, there's a few things I just you don't I just don't touch. Um, so. For my store, I sell movies, uh, video games, and and toys. Those are the three main pillars of the shop. But there's, so there's things. I, it's not that they don't sell. It's also that I just won't touch. So for example, I'm not interested in comic books. I'm not a comic book store. I don't have the floor space to sustain that. And comics don't really interest me. So you got to sell what you love, and you got to sell what you know. So there's some things I'll avoid. I don't really do trading cards as well. Um, sports memorabilia is just dead. I don't touch any sort. You could bring me in a Wayne Gretzky, whatever. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not interested in sports. Really. It doesn't, it doesn't move well for me. I don't know anything about it. So there's, there, it definitely is some things I just don't touch. Um, especially with toys, like with toys, I won't touch anything if it's made for a child. And by child, I mean like if it's not detailed then it's more not like an, an adult collector type figure, I just, I won't buy it anymore. So I don't buy any of that Fisher Price shit. <laughs> There's some things you just, I, it might look okay, but I'm not going to touch it. Another big one is movies. Movies is hard. In the age of streaming and Netflix, for me to sell used movies, everybody thinks I'm nuts doing this, but there's still a lot of collectors that want that physical hard case. They want that physical DVD that, or that physical Blu-ray to put on their shelf. Netflix is always limited with how long they have movies for. So their availability is always fluctuating. And that's a pain in the ass when you want to watch Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3 and it's not on there. So movies sell very well for me. It's just you have to pick the right movies. Yeah, and something like that would be um, maybe trying to keep a backlist of things that are out of print. That, yes like, yeah out of print movies yeah and like and generally the movie generally the movies people can't seem to find are horror movies because they have lower print runs they're a little bit more niche they're just a little bit trickier to find yeah. so and that's something we do specialize in as well as horror movies but the, the movies i avoid buying and luckily i went to film school and i was always a little bit of a, a, a film critic and i'm obvi obviously obviously i love the film medium i love the pa like i'm very passionate i watch tons of movies so i kind of rely on that of like what are the crappy movies that people don't really care about? And what are the better movies? So that's another thing is with movies, I, I, you really got to be very careful about what you're buying. Same thing with games too. 
I mean, it's like that with anything, really. No, for sure. Yeah. It's a very long-winded answer to a very complex question. It sounds simple, but there's more to it than that. Oh, <laughs> well, it's your inventory. Well, yeah, your inventory is your lifeblood of the store. And if you're buying the wrong shit, you're paying too much for it, guess what? You ain't making any money. The way, the way, do you mind if I say this yep. real quick? The, the way you have to approach your inventory, and this takes time to learn it if you've never had done a store before, every figure... Every piece that's on your shelf is paying you rent to be there. That's oh, the yeah. way it is. Or rather, you're paying rent for it to be there. That makes more sense. Yeah, for sure. So all of these little action figures that are behind us right now, I'm paying rent for every single one of these to be here. So these pieces have to generate money. Every inch of floor space is potential revenue. And if you're buying the wrong crap and you're filling all this area up, it just becomes dead space and you're just not making any money. So you have to be very careful about what you're buying and what you're pricing it at, too. No, for sure. Yeah. All right. What, if any, future plans do you have for the store in terms of expanding product further from what you already carry? Uh, well, an issue that I've run into is I don't have the largest store. Um, I would say I have may, maybe a mid-range size store. I, I'm not, based on my experience of shops I've been into... The biggest problem I have right now, and I ran into this issue within the first year of business, is I ran out of space to display things. And one of the biggest problems is you can buy all the inventory in the world, but if you don't have the, display, the space to display it, you ain't selling that inventory, and it's just collecting dust, and it's not making you any money. So plans I have right now, uh, I am interested in opening a larger store in the future. Uh, I am actually interested in expanding. The best thing for me right now for my resources and uh, what I have is I'm constantly looking at ways to more creatively display things to then fit more merchandise into it I got you. and I'm always looking for creative areas to mer like merchandise a wall that normally would not have like, it would have been dead space you know I'm always looking for I don't I'm looking for to make my store have zero dead space so I'm constantly looking for where can I put a new shelf uh, where can I add a hanger rack and I'll show you some of that. You'll see. I've been. I've added some some shelves and areas that were just nothing before, and and that's been huge for me because when you have a smaller shop, you need to make money out of every inch of the shop. You need to make the most most money you can to survive. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you have to be able to display as much stuff as possible, and in a small shop like this, it, it becomes difficult. Uh, another area that I'm looking to expand into, if you want me to get more yeah, into merchandise absolutely. and product. Um, so right now I do movies, I do video games, and I do horror. Horror, uh, we've struck a niche in the horror community. I quickly realized, I'm obviously a huge horror fan. I'm a huge, I consider myself a huge horror buff. Uh, I realized that it's actually hard to find horror merchandise. It's harder than you'd think. People don't generally order the stuff in. Yeah. It's, it's, it, as much as horror is hot right now, it's not if you go to big retail stores. They don't have jack shit for this kind of stuff. So... I started trying to make more of an emphasis on ordering in brand new horror merchandise. And I'm also getting into more, less action figures and more actual merchandise. So t-shirts and things like that. Uh, maybe we're going to get into wallets and purses. I'm not sure. It's on the table. <laughs> uh, hats perhaps in the future. But I'm, I'm looking to make this like your one-stop horror shop. Is, is something that is very important to me. And I, I think that's going to be part of the future of this business. All right. Fantastic. All right. I really appreciate your time today though. Oh, thank you for uh, having me in my own store. I appreciate it. No, that. thank you for uh, letting me host this in your store. That was uh, really nice of you to set aside some of your time out of your day. No problem. Anytime, pop in. Anytime. All right. Thank you a lot, man. All right. Cheers. Thank you.